Every day I see a video online that pisses me off, and I want to say something. I want to yell at the person who made the video or is in the video because yeah. because it pisses me off. But I but I don't because that just gives it more engagement. Maybe that was their goal in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I bite my tongue. But today's different. Today I'm today I'm mad. I'm mad because I saw a video that pissed me off. Uh -oh. We're gonna talk about it. You might have seen this video too. It's about a kid who broke the world record for Tetris, and it was them reporting on it. It was a yeah. journalist reporting on the story, but they decided to go freestyle. So this is them first explaining what happened. He beat the original Nintendo version of the game by reaching such a high level that the coding froze. That left the program unable to generate any more falling blocks. Okay. Yeah. As a mother, I would just say step away from the screen, go outside, get some fresh air. Beating Tetris is not a life goal. <laughs> Speaking of fresh air. Dude. Okay. Whoa. That is so annoying. Why Why even say that? Why even throw that in? A little spice on at the end. He's 13 years old. What do you mean life goal? The kid's got another 80 years to choose. She's just a stupid 45-year-old woman. What do you expect? What do you expect? What are we doing acting like this? She's 55? Yeah, 55. Sure. Like, yeah, okay. She's projecting because uh, she, she hasn't done any good. I mean, I think that a lot of people just don't take treat video games seriously. Like, that's it. True. Is a better life goal being a Sky News anchor? As a journalism major, I can tell you it's not. It's not going to pay a lot of the bills, I'll tell you that much. I don't know. Now, I'm not, look, trying to just spend this entire video attacking this, <laughs> this journalist or this news reporter for saying dumb shit, okay? She's a boomer. She doesn't get it because she'll that's gladly... Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's exactly it. I don't think this is that crazy or outlandish that some people don't respect the accomplishments of video game players. This is not a big deal. Like, is she a dumb bitch? Absolutely. Should she have said that? Absolutely not. Is it rude? A hundred percent. Is it a, like, I mean, do we really need to all get together and like shit on her for not caring about a kid beating Tetris? I don't think it's that big of a deal, guys. They go on her show and then uh, compliment the darts world champion. She doesn't tell uh -huh. the darts world champion to go outside. What about the merits of, of being really good at a video game versus being really good at poker? Or well, here's the truth is that being good at any sport doesn't matter and it has no real world value in any capacity. It's the same as being good at a video game. It doesn't matter. Like you can be the greatest basketball player of all time and nobody's life will be improved because of it. That's just how it is. It's the same as you can be the greatest Counter-Strike GO player of all time, and no one's life will be improved because of it. There's no tangible benefit in the same way that there is with a person being a fireman, with the same way that a person is with being a, uh, a doctor or something like that. None of these things actually have any real world value. They're all entertainment. And yes, there are there are vectors of entertainment that make money and that money is used to do beneficial things. Absolutely. It improves your own. Well, it depends, right? I mean, there are some people it does. Other people die from heat stroke for practicing out in football in, in the middle of the summer. Like, that happens too. So it, it's really not that simple. But I don't know why entertainment's valuable. Of course it's valuable. But what I'm saying is that I don't view being good at darts, for example, being good at CSGO, being good at Tetris, or being good at football as any better or worse than anything. I feel like they are all on the same level. It's just generally the way that I see it. There are skills learned from these sports and games, but you need to translate those skills to something useful for society. Well, you learn skills for everything that you do. By that logic, Twitch has no value. When have I gone around, when have I, like, do I ever try to, like, defend myself? Like, oh, people say I'm not doing anything. It's not a real job. Okay, fine. Think whatever you want. Yeah, it's just entertainment. It's just a video game, right? But yeah, I mean, he's definitely, like, Ludwig's definitely right that there's no... There's no real justification for why a uh, why playing darts is more commendable than playing video games. Billiards, like what what actually mm -hmm. matters if if it doesn't involve some physical activity that maybe improves your health, which has some inherent value. What's the real difference? It's all arbitrary mm -hmm. games we made up. Yeah, okay, exactly. It's, it's not just necessarily better because one is in front of a screen and the other isn't. 
I don't, I don't believe these things. Maybe it's because mm -hmm. my job is to play video games. But I yeah, think it's 100%. Uh, there is on a personal level. It's based, I don't agree at all. Many athletes are inspiration to younger people, give them something to latch onto and work themselves out of a tough situation. LeBron James improved the lives of millions of people by inspiring them to work hard. I think that you're totally right. I think you are 100% right about what you're saying. Absolutely. But the truth is that, so let me think of a way to say this. The reason why people want to be LeBron James is because LeBron James is rich and famous. I think that's the big reason. That's why people want to be in the NBA. That's why people want to be in the NFL. It's because they're massively rich and famous. So really, it's not being good at basketball. It's just using basketball as a venue to become rich and famous. So it's nothing that is intrinsic to basketball itself. Uh, streamers can be motivators as well. Yeah, anything can be motivating. That's nihilistic? No, it's not. It's just realistic. There's nothing wrong. Guys, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with liking basketball and, and wanting to be good at basketball. But the reality is that the only way that it makes money is because of advertising. It's not because of the thing itself. It has no intrinsic value in the same way that a scientist or an engineer or a doctor creates intrinsic value through the outcome of their work. Like basketball and entertainment creates secondary value. And I'm not saying that secondary value has no value, but it doesn't have an intrinsic value. And that doesn't take anything away from basketball. That doesn't take anything away from sports or anything away from video games because we love entertainment. Entertainment is amazing, but let's not pretend like it's anything less than anything more than entertainment. Like, let's just try to have fun, guys. Stop trying to act like we're changing the world by playing a video game or by playing a sport or anything like that. I think the point of view is how important the uh, achievement or critical the progression of the band should be in the whole situation. I think that really an adult shitting on a child that accomplished something is gross. Well, of course it's gross. It's pathetic. And the funny thing is that th this is probably going to be the thing that makes her more well-known than anything. So the fact that, like, she shit on a 16-year-old for liking a video game is probably going to be the highlight of her career. This will define her entire career. 13? Oh, he was... Th I thought he was 16. Thir yeah, uh, yeah, this is her 15 minutes. Yeah, uh, 15 minutes instead of a fame, this is a 15 minutes of shame. No, I think it's dumb what she said. She took away this boy's accomplishments. Mm -hmm. But I did a little digging. I did a little digging. Uh -oh. and, and again, we're not just spending uh -oh. this, this whole video talking about it. We're going to talk about how that world record's dope as shit. And I might have something to do with it. I found this out today. It's been blowing my mind. Now, for context, if you are totally new to this, this is the Tetris that they made mm -hmm. the movie about. The original Tetris that was on yep. the Nintendo that shipped with the, the, the NES, and, and, and it, was a whole, it was a whole big thing. It was the most popular game in the world. Uh, and this video uh, is, is him actually beating it. The, the, the guy's name is Blue Scooty on uh -huh. YouTube. He posted a video about it, 1.7 million views. Here's him breaking it. And he basically got so deep in the game, the game crashed. He's the first kid to ever do that. First human to ever do that. Yeah. And he pops off. Right. He's 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 lit because he he did something nobody had ever done in the history of the 100%. world. Hundred percent. By the way, he also dedicated this to his father, who passed away like like last month. Oh, that's like, horrible, bro. He's thirteen. And that happened. How did she do sucks. research to find out how he wow. got the record, but not be like, oh yeah, great accomplishment, kid, good shit. Because and she didn't do any research. Because just like Ludwig said, I mean, he's a journ. He said he was a journalism major or something like that. Like, well, you know this then. Uh, journalists don't do that anymore. That's th that doesn't happen. Uh, what you do is you make a headline and then uh, you base everything else off of what your opinion on it is. That's it. Yeah, that's horrible. And you have to remember that there are a lot of boomers that think the exact same way that that woman thinks. And you're never going to convince her that Tetris is actually a good way to spend your time. And the thing is that she's not wrong. It's just a different value system that people that are older than us grew up with. And we don't have that value system. And the only thing that's going to make that change is time whenever... Let's be real, they all die out. Because I guarantee you that there were things that they had whenever they were 13 or 30 or whatever uh, that woman had that they had value in, they thought was really important, and their parents were like, this is fucking stupid. Like, why aren't you going out? And, you know, like, why aren't you married at 18? Why aren't you working on the farm? Something like that.
you dedicate to your father. Oh, no, instead he, it, she tears him down. Blows my mind. Blows my mind. Yeah. But again, it's not about her. It's not about her. I don't give a shit about her. I don't give a shit about her. I give a shit about this kid, Blue Scooty, who did the impossible. And this video by a game scout really yeah. goes in depth and explains why this is so impressive, how it's so cool, if it can be replicated. I very much recommend mm -hmm. watching this video. I'm not going to be able to tell you. All right, Tetris is a 34-year-old game. All you have to know is that this is the first time someone's ever done that. And only recently, the past few years, have they even had the ability to do that. And I think there was like a like a task run that broke the game not too long ago. Well, like a, uh, what happened was, so the kid... In order to beat Tetris, and to get so, so basically the the speed of the game goes up every single level, but at level twenty nine, that's the level that nobody could beat for a very very long time until another guy a few years ago came up with some technique called like multi tapping or something like that, and this is effectively where he's like vibrating his thumb on the controller in order to create more tapping motions in order to move the pieces faster. Rolling, yeah, I don't remember exactly like what it was. And so that allowed him to go to 30, but nobody really knew, as far as I know, what the actual end of the game was. But for a lot of very, very low... So this is a parallel that a lot of you guys might not remember, but in, I think, 32-bit integer, integer systems, the highest number that it can process via data is 2,100,000. 2.16 billion, right? I think it's somewhere around there. 2.147, yeah. Okay, so, t t yeah, 2147. So, um, basically what happened was, obviously this is not a 32-bit game, right? This is like an 8-bit game or something even below that. And once a number reaches that high amount, it will fuck up the game. So, what my understanding is, is that the kid accumulated so many points that that number was reached, at which point the game could not process the number, which caused the entire game to crash and fall apart. And there are also like partial, yeah, an overflow, an uh, integer overflow, yes. And and that's that's what I think happened. And this this is also something that happens with like other arcade games. So like for example, with Pac-Man, uh, half of the screen completely goes invisible, and you can't see the other half of the screen. And you are not able to collect enough of the little dots in order to finish the game. So the game has a actual ending, even though it's not intended, because of the limitations of the integer uh, overflow of those games. That's the reason why the kid hit the kill screen. In like another, uh, like, and, and this is not uncommon. We all remember the, uh, at least a lot of people probably remember, like the, uh, the credit warp. Uh, glitch that people were doing in Super Mario World where they were able to like throw a Yoshi block up and then jump over here jump on the Koopa get on Yoshi again eat the thing and then it just beats the game well this is effectively another version of that does that make sense I, I hope that I explained that in the proper way but that's my understanding of why the accomplishment was such a big deal like a few years ago but but it's actually cheese another mm -hmm. Tetris player who invented the technique implemented, all right? And they invented this technique called rolling. Mm -hmm. You might have heard of this before. It's just how you play Tetris a little bit faster. It involves basically rolling on the back of an NES controller yeah. so that it hits your finger. There's a lot right. of people, um, I think that they play paintball uh, in order to shoot faster bullets in paintball. They'll use two fingers, which is like another alternate version of effectively this. Other than having to hit the button itself. You have a larger pad to hit off. Makes a lot of sense. And, and Cheese came up with it. Let's listen to a Game Scout video on how Cheese came up with it. Mm -hmm. Cheese watched a YouTube tutorial on button mashing where a player was getting extra taps on a GameCube controller by pushing the controller into the finger over the buttons from the other side. So now that video looked really familiar while I was doing research about this story. So I decided to look it up yeah. and I was right. This video is by Silver Boxer. And if you don't know that name, let me just show you a couple seconds of this video. For the nice folks at home, this is the comprehensive button mashing guide. And you might be wondering, uh... Ludwig, why are you on the screen right there? It's because Silver Boxer is the button mashing goat. The button mashing goat that I pulled out of retirement when I did this about four years ago. Oh my god. Yeah! And that's the...
because I hired somebody to break this Mario Party mini game, which usually has a cap of 160, meaning mm -hmm. you can't mash more than 16 times a second, to be up to 300, which is the max you could theoretically do in 10 seconds based off the the, the polling rate of the game. And yeah. I got the first 200 because, well, I, I invented this shit. I, I, I asked the guy to, to remove the cap. That's a YouTube thumbnail right better. there. Yeah, true. And I, I broke 200 first. I did do that. And then I said, if anyone's able to beat me, I'll pay them a, a, a nice reward, $10 Per button press, I think that's what it was. Okay. And you know who the fucking person who beat me was? I can't find the video of it. I think he took it down. It was Silver Boxer, who who is a much better masher than me. I'm pretty fucking good. He got 238. Wow. All right. And you know how I learned seconds? how to mash in the first place? Two hundred. Oh, wait, 238 in 10 seconds. That's almost 60. That's almost. Oh my god. 20. Yeah, 23 even times a second. Older button mashing guide from silver boxer i'm telling you this guy is the true mashing goat i watch his video in college to beat my friends at mario party so i would have a couple Bro, of games look at I this guy at, and then i just kept doing it kept doing it kept oh doing my it. god Never got as good as silver boxer my god you are a legend but that video made me do the mashing made silver boxer do a nether video which included me in it made a tetris player i watch. guarantee you if i was a kid i would be doing this a hundred fucking percent man and then I would want to, like, have people come over to play Mario Party just so I could farm them. Innovate yeah, on I would the Tetris meta made a kid who watched the documentary of how that bashing got invented get into Tetris, and then that kid broke the fucking world record, and then he's getting flamed on Sky News as if this isn't, like, one of the coolest things that could have ever happened. Like, how many humans across the globe have connected to make this happen, and we're, and we're, and we're being mean? Bro, here's one way to look at it. Do you think that woman can use a computer in a proficient way? If you asked her to pull up Task Manager, could she do it? <laughs> if you asked her to um, run a uh, program, uh, ask her to open up CMD, what is BIOS? She don't know a fucking thing. It's just like... That's just how it is. Cause like, I remember I had, this is a, the story to me is a bit personal because I remember in 2011, I got invincible. The mount from the heroic Lich King on 25 man. Now, how did I get this mount? We won't talk about that, but what we will talk about is the fact that I got it. And I told my dad, I was like, dad. Dad, dad, oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. And I'm pulling up my flip phone. Oh, look, look what I got. What I got. I got. I and he's like, What's that? And I said, It's invincible. It's like, this is like the mount. This is the mount. This is the one mount. This is the best mount. And my dad's like, You got that? And I said, Yep. He's like, Did you get a job? <laughs> and I'm like, Dad. Dad, 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 not right now, not right now. No, see, you don't understand, right? Like, I got this mount. Like, I, this is so, you know the Lich King, right? Okay, so the Lich King, so he used to be, like, the fucking prince of, like, uh, of Lordaeron, right? And, like, Lordaeron is, like, the city in the game. And so then, like, Invincible was, like, his horse. And then so whenever he died and became the Lich King, then he resurrected the horse. So this is, like, the Lich King's horse that I got. And he's, like, so... Uh, I see that. Okay. So did you apply at Walmart or not though? Cause I'm not, uh, yeah, I don't remember. Cause we were talking about this the other day and I don't remember like it, whether that happened or not. And so, yeah, I remember this happened. Right. And the thing is though, yeah, my dad was kind of an asshole, but he was also kind of right. He was, he was also, he was also kind of right. Anyway, I figured of this meanness, some niceness could come. If this story yeah. was somewhat interesting Were you to you 13? or cool to you. I was acting like I was. Uh, uh, Scooty, Blue Scooty, uh, he, he streams. He streams sometimes. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. not on Twitch. He Ooh. used to stream on Twitch, but Twitch banned him because he was, he was too under, young. Not a yeah. account uh, if you're under 13. I think he's over 13 now. For being honest, he probably made the account when he was under 13, and so that's why they banned him. Look, Twitch, if you can help this guy out, it would be a fucking huge W. He's over 13. He's godlike. Uh, he deserves... Pretty bad time to be asking Twitch to let a minor on the platform. Given the situations recently.
respect it. He also is uh, is uh, a streamer on YouTube. If you guys want to give him some love uh, over at Blue Scooty, mm -hmm. uh, but but just wanted to give a shout out and and talk about that story. I'll keep it under eight minutes so there's no mid roll ads. But that's it. That's it. Though you don't have to uh, go attack the the news anchor. Don't do that. Obviously, she's she's a dumb boomer, and in that dumb boomer she mentality, will understand. die when the new generation takes over. She, and that's us. There it is. Cool. He we said understand it. The value of humans and connections and in records. All right. That's uh, right. Stalling now. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Goodbye. See you later. Goodbye. Goodbye. That's Goodbye. right, guys. Goodbye. Teach them young. Yeah, it, it's just it's so funny whenever I see boomers like that, man. It is fucking hilarious. It's for science. Yeah, there's a video. Make sure to give it a like. I love the Ludwig uh, mogul mail videos. This is true. Imagine working that hard and making the news just get told to touch grass. Imagine working that hard, becoming a news anchor, and then the first thing that happens that makes you well known in the public is just everybody shitting on you because you don't care about a 13 year old playing a video game. <laughs> Think about it from her perspective, you know? <laughs> Think about where she's at. Oh, man. She's got 13 year olds that she's more than this lady has in her whole life. Uh, she's the kind of person that treats her kids like shit while raising them and then wonders why they don't want anything to do with her whenever they grow up. I enjoy how it actually brings facts and not just opinions, so it proves himself. Yeah, the Tetris thing, by the way, guys, uh, you know, I, I explained it a little bit, but, um, you know, if you want to look into it and, and, and like the tech. I find it very interesting the way that the tech exists of beating old arcade games. Because it's almost like the more that you understand about technology, you'll like learn these like really weird, crazy parallels to video games. And I think that's just one of the coolest things, man. So yeah, Billy Mitchell. Well, Billy Mitchell knows a lot about video games. He knows so much about <laughs> He knows how to change them. Not only, not only does he know how to play the games, but he knows how to program them in a way that they play differently to make other people think that they play the real way. That's impressive. Look at that. That's some real fucking talent right there.